Hello, and welcome to this APCO Basic Science Objective video about contraception. The objectives of this video are to review the different forms of contraception available to prevent pregnancy, understand the mechanism of action for each form of contraception, and understand contraindications to each option, as well as other clinical considerations for use. I can't believe how much stuff we have to cover for the repro exam. I know, the pelvis just seems like a black hole. I may just skip the contraception section. I mean, it's not that important. What are you talking about? That is critical. How are you going to counsel patients on what to do if you have no idea how the methods work? All right, but it seems like so much and it doesn't make any sense. No worries, we can help. Let's make it easy. There are two big categories, hormonal contraception and non-hormonal contraception. Hormonal contraception options include estrogen progesterone containing products such as oral contraceptive pills, the transdermal combined hormone patch, and the combined hormone vaginal ring. The progesterone-only options include progesterone-only pills, a tonogesterol implant, levonorgestrel intrauterine device, or IUD, and medroxyprogesterone acetate injections. Non-hormonal options include lactational amenorrhea, fertility awareness methods, and barrier methods such as condoms, diaphragms, or spermicide. They also include male and female sterilization and the copper intrauterine device. Before we can go over how to prevent fertilization, you need to understand all the necessary steps for conception. First, sperm is deposited in the vagina. Sperm must pass through the cervix to the uterus to reach the fallopian tube. Ovulation occurs, and the oocyte is released into the fallopian tube. Sperm and oocyte must meet in the fallopian tube and trigger fertilization. Finally, the blastocyst travels to the uterus and implants in the endometrium. We can group contraception by how they function. Those that prevent ovulation, those that prevent fertilization, and those that prevent implantation. Ovulation prevention is the main mechanism for combined hormonal contraceptive pills, medroxyprogesterone acetate injections, levonorgestrel IUD, etanogestrel implants, and lactational amenorrhea. Exogenous progestin and estrogen leads to the suppression of GnRH release from the hypothalamus, which increases LH and FSH release from the pituitary. Therefore, there is no stimulation of ovarian follicle development. In combined estrogen and progestin contraception, it is the progestin component that is the most important for ovulation suppression. Lactational amenorrhea occurs when infant suckling interrupts GnRH secretion, resulting in a decrease of LH-FSH release. This decrease leads to a lack of ovarian follicle development. Ovarian suppression can be inconsistent with lactation. The second major category are those methods which prevent fertilization. It is important to remember that this means each of the approximately 60 million sperm that are released per ejaculate must be kept away from the ovulated oocyte. We can consider these methods as physical, chemical, or temporal barriers. Physical barriers consist of condoms, both male and female, diaphragms, male and female sterilization, as well as thickened cervical mucus caused by progesterone-only methods such as pills, implants, injections, and progestin-only IUDs. Let's pause, think, and apply. Your patient's male partner wants to know if there are any options for birth control that he can be responsible for besides condoms. What do you suggest? For males, the options include condoms or male sterilization or vasectomy. In this procedure, the vas deferens are transected bilaterally. It is important to note that this procedure is done with local anesthesia in a physician's office. This is in contrast to female sterilization, which is usually performed in the operating room under general anesthesia. Chemical barriers include spermicide and copper IUD. The copper IUD causes a local inflammation that is toxic to sperm and egg. It also interferes with sperm motility. Let's pause, think, and apply. What is the mechanism of action of spermicides, and are there other barrier methods that would increase contraception efficacy? The active ingredient in spermicide is nonoxinal 9 or octoxinal 9. The spermicide is deposited right near the cervix before sex and needs to be kept in place for at least an hour afterwards. It can be used in conjunction with a diaphragm to improve efficacy. Finally, temporal barriers include fertility awareness methods and emergency contraception. It is important to note that emergency contraception is purely a temporal barrier and will not interfere with an established pregnancy. Let's pause, think, and apply. 
your patient would like to try fertility awareness with her partner. Physiologically, how does fertility awareness work to prevent conception? There are many types of fertility awareness methods, but all rely on a woman having regular, predictable menstrual cycles and a partner who is also committed to the method. Women can use a calendar to predict the most fertile days and avoid intercourse at that time. Unprotected sex is avoided about five days before ovulation, the day of ovulation, and for at least 24 hours after. Unprotected sex is avoided during the anticipated time of ovulation and for at least 24 hours after. You can also use changes in cervical mucus to assist in determining where you are in the cycle. Cervical mucus, under the effect of estrogen, immediately prior to ovulation, is much thinner to allow for sperm penetration. A quick reminder that the emergency contraceptive pill, Eulopristol acetate, which is approved for up to five days after sex, is a selective progesterone receptor modulator. It binds but does not activate progesterone receptors and therefore interferes with dominant follicle recruitment and ovulation even after the LH surge. The copper IUD can also be used as a highly effective emergency contraception up to five days after unprotected sex. One advantage is that it continues to provide highly effective contraception for up to 10 years. Hey, don't stop now. You still have the final category of methods which prevent implantation. Don't worry, I didn't forget. The IUDs, both hormonal and non-hormonal, create inflammation which is inhospitable to implantation. Progestins cause endometrial thinning and this resting state endometrium does not allow for implantation. Okay, I think this all makes sense, but I'm still having a hard time understanding the difference between how combined estrogen progesterone methods and the progesterone only methods work. Okay, let's take progestin first, as it is the dominant component. Progestin inhibits LH secretion and the LH surge through negative feedback on the pituitary and the hypothalamus. This leads to inhibition on ovulation. Ovulation can still occur in about 5% of combined pill users and 40% of progesterone-only pill users. In addition, the progestin component thickens cervical mucus, creates a thin resting endometrium, and may interfere with egg transport by a tubal peristalsis. Progestins can have three major forms. The most common are testosterone-derived progestins, such as levonorgestrel, etanogestrel, or norgestimate. They may be analogs of spironolactone, such as drosperinone, or a progesterone analog, such as medroxyprogesterone acetate. The estrogen component assists with FSH suppression and prevents follicle recruitment, maturation, and ovulation via negative feedback. Estrogen also potentiates the concentration of progesterone receptors. Importantly, it helps stimulate balanced endometrial proliferation to minimize irregular bleeding. Estrogens are either ethanol estradiol or estradiol valerate. Huh, this is great. Women have so many choices. Well, not really many medical conditions limit a woman's ability to use certain methods. The Center for Disease Control Medical Eligibility Criteria can be very helpful, but this chart will give you the quick and dirty while you are studying tonight. The chart displays common medical conditions on the left and contraception options across the top. The numbers and colors indicate the safety of a particular method in the context of the specific medical condition. This is an extremely valuable resource for all clinicians and can be found on the CDC webpage. Okay, but there is so much more I need to know. How to pick the right method, which ones work best, and even how to tell my patients how to use them. Hey, no problem. All those questions are covered in the APCO educational video number 33 on family planning. This concludes this APCO basic science objective video about contraception. You should be able to review the different forms of contraception available to prevent pregnancy, understand the mechanism of action for each form of contraception, and understand contraindications to each option as well as other clinical considerations for use. Thanks for watching.